Justin Matabike earlier in the show and 13 sacks this year. They're going to have to find a way uh, to keep him. Patrick Queen, one of their star linebackers, a key part of that defense. You see there Gus Edwards, the running back, is a free agent, as are their two starting guards. So, I don't know, maybe they were practicing for next year. They're preparing to lose the guards and the running backs. So maybe they were trying to see if they could get, get by without <laughs> handing the ball uh, off to any running backs. Maybe, that, maybe that's what was going on there. It's as good an explanation as any I've heard. Oh, sometimes you're just so dry, Graz. I love it. Uh, let's take a closer look at the offense. Mina, where should the personnel focus be when you look at making some changes to the offensive unit for the Ravens this offseason? Well, Laura, this is what made the performance in the the championship game so infuriating. This offense doesn't need to change much. It's mm. already extremely talented. I, I think looking at the free agents, you see OBJ and Aguilar's name there. So even with Flowers emerging as a true wide receiver one, Bateman, the first rounder, uh, is still on the roster. You're going to have to add some veteran depth at receiver. And then Gus Edwards, you know, we'll see what happens with J.K. Dobbins. But as a free agent, I'm sure they would love to bring him back or perhaps address running back in the draft. I will say one area where they did struggle in terms of the running backs was with pass protection mm -hmm. in the championship game. That's something Steve Spagnuolo yeah. really went after. So that might be something I would prioritize if I'm Baltimore. But the reality is there's not much that needs to be changed from a personnel standpoint when it comes to this offense. Yeah, Lamar told me Munkin's offense was like fireworks going off, but unfortunately they didn't go off when it mattered most. All right, let's talk about the defense a little bit with Marcus. What should be the top Nobody priority no for that Ravens defense on that front? <laughs> Listen, it, just a matter of BK comes to mind first, right? Right? Y'all know how I am when it comes to interior defensive linemen. He was a difference maker for this defense. He was a big reason why they were the number one defense in the league this year. And obviously the sacks get a lot of attention, but it's just the pressure that he created. But look at the guys that are available for the Baltimore Ravens potentially to entertain. You got Chris Jones up there. Obviously, you don't think Kansas City gonna let him ride out. Josh Allen is very intriguing off the edge, which they may lead, lose Jadavian Clowney. That was a one-year deal. Trying to keep Matt BK in house, I'm sure it's gonna be a big deal for Eric DeCosta, the German manager, Christian Wilbert. It's a lot of guys that are available up front to change games that the Baltimore Ravens may can get if they feel like they'll be just this close again next year vying for a Super Bowl. Those are the moves that you make to make a difference. Yeah, Justin Matabike told us he felt like this Ravens team was different and was destined to win a Super Bowl. You wonder if that factors in at all when it comes to what he may do, but money and contract also factors in too. Now, they could be <laughs> losing their defensive leader. Things could look different when it comes to this Ravens coordinator group. Defensive coordinator Mike McDonald is a top candidate for head coaching jobs, and he met with Seattle today. More on that coming in a moment. But ESPN Ravens reporter Jamison Hensley asked some players about McDonald's future, and linebacker Patrick Queen said, quote, he's the best candidate out there. Nobody cares like him. And McDonald would be a great fit for Seattle, okay, mm. since they are in the NFC West and they have to face both Kyle Shanahan's 49ers and Sean McVay's Rams twice a season. The Ravens are 2-0 and against San Fran and L.A. in the last two seasons. And McDonald's defense gave both of those prolific offenses trouble. Not many defenses or defensive coordinators can say that. Mina, you like the idea of McDonald as the next coach in Seattle if they decide to go that route? Have some poise, you know I Mina. Do, Laura. Have some poise. <laughs> I, <I'm, laughs> play cool. Play it cool, Mina. <laughs> no, really. Don't let that play leave Seattle. Um, no, okay. I, I, I've talked about the scheme. We, we've talked about the scheme a lot this year, right? The Baltimore scheme, the simulated pressures, all the stuff they do in the back end, the way they've handled uh, the Shanahan tree offenses. That goes without saying. I think I'll, I'll hit something different, though, that I've been so impressed by with McDonald. And I think that would be important to Seattle which is it's one thing to call to be uh, a genius schematically. It's another to get the most out of the players you have. Now, some of that's young players like Patrick Queen, uh, who really has seen his career take off since Mike McDonald and Roquan Smith joined uh, Baltimore. Uh, or a player like Kyle Hamilton, who in his second year has emerged as an absolute superstar. But what's really impressed me is there's so many players on this defense, Marcus, who had career years veterans, guys like Jadavian Clowney, who I think had yes. his best year in the NFL this season with Mike McDonald, the way that they deployed him. Um, Michael Pierce, Kyle Van Noy joining midseason. All of these players played their best football. And to me, when there's so many things we look for in a head coach, but the number one is someone who gets the most out of their players. And he clearly did that in Baltimore. Yes.
Uh, didn't have that Patrick Queen piece of information about nobody cares like him. I love that mm -hmm. boasted confidence. Don't go be yeah. Brandon, don't don't go be Staley or Josh McDaniels. All right, you're managing 53 now. It's not just a unit. You can't just go into your little cubby hole and deal with your guys. And that's always the adjustment we, that you think of, that I think about when I see coordinators go to head coaches. Now his reputation obviously precedes him. The players that I were able to talk to in Baltimore when we were there. They love it. They love the, his energy. They love the way he comes to the game. But Mina, more importantly, it's the it, what what you mentioned, getting the most. But these guys love having their best seasons, and they attribute a lot of that to the guy that's coaching and leading them. They love this defensive staff as a whole, and this speaks volumes about what Mike McDonald was able to create within the construct of that defense. But not only the defense, the locker room. The players will always be the best. Uh, gauge for a coach leaving to go get another job and all these dudes to a man that I talk to Patrick Queen Matt BK, they have a tremendous amount of respect and they think he's a hell of a coach and that's why obviously Seattle wanted to go meet with him interesting the Seattle Seahawks front office representatives are in Baltimore today uh, talking to Mike McDonald uh, it's the first time they've interviewed him. He did not do uh, a Zoom first interview like a lot of candidates did uh, because it was that week the Ravens were on by and they just – Seattle just didn't get the Pete Carroll thing sorted out in time to schedule all the mm. interviews they wanted. So today's the first chance they've had to talk to him. They did a bunch of second interviews last week. Guys like Patrick Graham, Dan Quinn, Ejiro Evero, and Mike Kafka, the Giants offensive coordinator, who I've been told by a couple of different people today as a guy to watch – uh, as a possibility in Seattle. They were very impressed with him. So McDonald, a candidate in Seattle, a candidate in Washington. They can't both get him, uh, and we'll see how, the, how it comes out of the interview today. But these situations should be wrapping up here, I think, by the end of this week.